Um, obviously, the most important thing for the Voyager documentary, like the others, uh, is to get the main cast. And, you know, you really would like to have all of them. And so far, we've gotten through to many of the cast. Everyone knows about it. Everyone's on board. Um, we really got slowed down, just like everyone in the world, because of COVID. So we've had to kind of be very creative over the last year and a half with where we shot and how we shot. Um, getting that 10 days in Los Angeles was like a dream come true because we hadn't had anything like that. We'd done a few in person, but only with one person at a time. And um, and it's been great. And of course, as you'll see, it's not just Voyager people, not just Voyager actors. This is one big family, one big Star Trek family. So we have actors from Deep Space Nine and Enterprise and everyone's been so supportive of this documentary. Um, so that's been you, fun. It's not just seeing the people from Voyager, it's seeing people from the other shows as well. You know, I think if you look at what we left behind, you'll see that there were people that were not necessarily part of the Deep Space Nine cast or crew, but they were instrumental in it. People like Kerry McCluggage, who was the head of Paramount Television at the time. You know, we like to get those more unique voices that uh, and come at things from a different perspective. And I believe, uh, Henry, you saw that in Chaos on the Bridge. We had John Pike. We had all those writers. We had a lot. We just had a lot of different people in traditionally. We didn't have as much of the cast, but we had a lot of the writers and they had a very unique story to tell. There was actually more. The cast got along fine everybody knows the next generation <laughs> cast they had a lot they had a blast but if you were a writer especially in those first couple of years it was a rocky road a lot of those people didn't didn't survive uh at least uh you know they survived living but they didn't survive that show they ended so up on that bathroom list career. where they wrote so, all the exactly. writers who left so, so, so it one was thing a revolving really, revolving door in those days and, trust I was there. And, it was crazy. Yeah, and so uh, in re in relation to uh, to the journey, one of the, some of the things that I'm very proud that we got uh, is we have uh, several executives from Paramount and UPN uh, oh, wow. in the can. We have a few more that we're planning on getting. Very, there's a a woman that's referenced in. Uh, a chaos, but we're planning to speak to her, Lucy Salhaney, and she's really instrumental in the reason why any of us know Trek in the night of the eighties and nineties is she's the one who figured out how to sell it and syndication and uh, and kept that engine running for you know what she was able to do that that the, that engine went for what seventeen years, yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, so, and the fact that she was a woman in those times, a woman, a woman yeah. in that position in those times was amazing. Um, and w yeah, so and in well, UPN, when UPN came out, she was the president of the UPN network, you know, oh, during Voyager. Yeah. So that's going to be interview those, gold. Those, those, yeah. are the, those are the things that I think will make it unique. And, you know, if people are interested in how something is made, <laughs> then hopefully they'll you know hopefully they they will be because that's that's a part of what this documentary is about yeah. now guys also, oh sorry oh please go ahead Lillian. i was just going to say for me on a personal note and i know the fans are thrilled about this because i saw the reaction in vegas is that my dear friend jerry taylor we spent two days at her house and it was so wonderful to get to interview her and visit with her because we've been close for all these years and I know Joe and Dave have fallen in love with her. She's just a dream. And I got to bring her to Las Vegas for the first time this year. And to see the fans so excited to see. Amazing. Her. Yeah. So that's from probably so far for me on the Voyager documentary. That's been the thing that's been the coolest. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, I have to agree with that. I mean, to have the creator, co-creator yes. of the show, uh, a part of the documentary is you know, Michael Pillar is no longer with us. We've had Rick Berman for for all those documentaries, but to have that that voice of Jerry Taylor is is Janeway, you know, and so that that was what a what a great experience interviewing her. We're so happy. I'm so happy to have met her. We're so happy that she is a part of this, and her voice has not been heard 
from for a, quite a long time. Mm -hmm. So now, guys, can you give us a uh, just a really quick update as far as how production is going? Like what we're going to be shooting next? What what the hopes are for shooting uh, and getting the rest of the shots in the can over the next several months, even though obviously COVID permitting. Yes. Well, I'll go first and I'll let Joe jump in. Fingers crossed, please, everyone. Um, the Destination Star Trek convention in London is in November. And even though it's two years late because of COVID, it's still the 25th anniversary celebration of Voyager. Um, we're hoping that most of the cast will be there. Um, we are planning to be there as the documentary team. And we're hoping it all goes well. We're going to get a lot of great interviews and a lot of fun stuff from the cast that's there. So that's our next big, big jump at this point in November. So it's looking good, but you just don't know. Everything these days is so fluid. But that's our hope. And then we have some other uh, one, you know, one on ones we'll do over the next few months. And then Joe, as far as editorial goes. Well, I've uh, really just started editorial, truly. Um, I've, I've put together various the sneak peeks and the, the little teasers from the, the crews. I've, I've played with a few things, but um, after that, the, that uh, week and a half of shooting, it took quite a lot to, you know, I had to process all the footage and sync all the cameras up with the audio and send everything out for transcripts so i've done all that and now we have all the transcripts of everything that we've shot so far going back to the cruise uh and i'm now able to actually roll up my sleeves and and start creating uh or working with the footage not really creating but creating moments out of all the footage that we have so yeah. i'm really excited about that you know it's um you know editing is kind of like uh you know i watch a lot of cooking shows with my wife and they, and they always talk about mise en place and mise en place is having all your spices and your 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 essential ingredients all laid out and that's what editing is it's getting a bunch of stuff and getting it all organized and laid out so that you can now go to town and, and whip up some delicious uh, food and uh, and i'm going to try and do that for uh whip up delicious food for the mind <laughs> <laughs> Yum. uh now very quickly to close out the update a quick update on the fulfillment end of things uh we will be locking orders as far as backer kit is concerned on november 1st so everybody that's filled out your surveys uh great awesome uh any orders can still be changed or added to until november 1st after that we're locking everything down and that's a good thing that is one step closer to ordering everything and sending it all out. So please make sure you got that done. I think 94% uh, of you have completed everything, but it's that other 6% that we're really watching. Uh, <laughs> so we also have a very big announcement from our virtual TrekCon team member, meteorologist Katie. However, Joe and Lolita, we know you've got to go and we do appreciate your time. Uh, any final thoughts? Before we say goodbye. Well, sorry, the gardeners just showed up. So if I had my gardeners show up right when we started, so I <laughs> muted, and luckily you guys all took over. I was muted. <laughs> no, no, I'm glad to have been able to join you all today. And again, I mean, we can't thank all of you fans enough for helping us get this project done. And it, it it's going to be great. We um we're very excited and looking forward to finishing it and. Moving on to the next one, whatever that might be. Joe? Every, everything that Lolita just said, thank you so much for uh, having us and um, having me and uh, letting me go off and off and off. Sorry, Lolita, sometimes I'm like a train. <laughs> no, I can't stop rolling. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for us. And it's always <laughs> good to see you, Melissa and Sirach yes. and Ryan. And it's a pleasure to meet you, Jim yes. Marie. And, uh, <laughs> thank you, everyone uh, that's watching. Great. And enjoy the little preview. Oh yes. Yeah, so oh yeah, in, definitely. Oh, anyway. seventeen minutes. And, and we want to want to stress that this this preview, it's really it's not a teaser for the documentary. It's just an uh, overview of what we did in that that ten day period. 
So you can, and, and it was just, so you could see the, the beautiful set that we had designed by a, a couple of the art directors on the Orville who were, were donated their time, which was just awesome. So we're very thankful for that. And so we hope you enjoy that, but it's, it's not, you're not going to get any insights into the, the, the documentary other than the fact that you're going to see a lot of people that worked or were part of that uh, series. So the chef says, you're just going to get a taste, guys. Just a taste. That's right. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Lolita. Thanks, Joe. Thank you so much. Okay. See you all Thank later. You guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.